what is what is the Cicero Institute's approach to homelessness, and how is it different and more effective than what you encountered in California? Yeah, so that's you know we're looking for areas where there again where there's giant gaps in the world between how things should work and how they work mm-hmm. today, uh, thanks to bad policy, and, and the homelessness stuff is a really good example of that. Our, our, our general policy is that is that I mean basically it's common sense. The way things are done now in California are mm-hmm. totally insane. You have uh, you have a billion dollars being given out not based on data or metrics, but based on political favors to very powerful, very corrupt nonprofit groups whose incentives are completely misaligned. So these cities and these nonprofit groups get more money for doing the wrong things. So what are what are the I, and I know you're a big critic, and I think this is capturing everybody in the field of of the housing first policy that like the first thing you do to address homelessness is somehow either build more housing or give more housing to people. Um, the, why the, is that wrong? The, the, the 75% of these people uh, in these cities uh, are, are on drugs uh, who are homeless and 75% of them are mentally ill. It's overlapped. And if you give someone who's on drugs and mentally ill a house, uh, you know, I think in San Francisco they have more people who died in these homes than who moved on to, 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 to being self-sufficient. I mean, this is it's, it's a total mess. And then, by the way, who gets the homes? Uh, it's a lot of people who are working in the, in the nonprofit groups get the homes, and people are close to them, of course. Uh, and we tried to make it so we had to give the homes to the people who are the most vulnerable, which sounds good on paper. It's that idea around equity. Yeah. And there's a, there's a vulnerability index they created, uh, which is used by most homeless groups now in most cities. Most, most of the cities around the country are using it, the progressive groups. And the index says you get more points towards a home if you're on drugs. You get more points towards a home if you've committed a crime. It's more points if it's a violent crime. Uh, you get more points if you're not in a drug recovery program mm-hmm. because you need it more. And you, you go, through, you get more points if your kids are truant, if they're taken away mm-hmm. from you. So you go through this, and if you're on the very far left and you see everything is just being you're a victim or not, and things are just happening to you, they say, "Oh, these things happen to you." Should you get more points? Uh, if you understand the world like a like a person who understands logic and reason, is you realize, "Wow, these are creating incentives, mm-hmm. right?" And so we actually go into we follow our nonprofit will follow uh, and try to help people working with the homeless industrial complex. Even here in Austin, they walk mm-hmm. into this thing that's been set up by these progressive groups. And, 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 he, and, they, and he say, you, sir, deserve a home. Here's how you can get a tent. And he mm-hmm. said, I don't really need a tent. I'm sleeping on someone's couch. He says, I'm going to pretend I didn't hear that because mm-hmm. you're more likely to get a home if you're in the tent. And here's how you set it up. And, and, and then he comes mm-hmm. back two months later and he said, and she says, oh, you're not quite there for a home yet. The Republicans haven't given us enough funding. And he says, I hear I would have maybe qualified for a home by now if I was on drugs. And she mm-hmm. says, well, that might have given you enough points, but we don't mm-hmm. like to think of it that way. Like, this is literally the conversation. Yeah, yeah. It is. It is. It is more, I think a lot of people don't realize our country is like more insane on these things than, yeah. than, than they assume it's like something more logical than it is. It's not. Do you, um, you've, you're, uh, the Cicero Institute has model legislation, right, for how to deal with homelessness? It, and you it kind does. Of sketch we have, that we have eight different points. That, mm-hmm. you know, gov, gov, governor, governor. What are the big ones? Yeah. Uh, well, the big ones is you want to redirect money away from housing first towards mental health treatment and, and mm-hmm. drug treatment. You want to redirect things towards temporary shelter, not towards, not, not toward, you know, not towards mm-hmm. just giving away homes. It's much more efficient and scalable. You want to realign the incentives. So cities ban street sleeping and yeah. put people into the shelters and they don't get more money for bringing more homeless people in. You want to basically, you want to basically realign things where the dollars given out to the nonprofit groups are given out based on metrics and goals. Right. So you have accountability, you audit mm-hmm. them, you say, here's your goals yeah. and you get the money, not based on being politically connected, but based on what you're hitting. Right. And, and, and like, by the way, the, one of the big ones we really like uh, is what is basically called diversion courts. And so you want a court that could actually force treatment for people. So if someone in San Francisco, uh, forgive me, has pooped on the street for like mm-hmm. a fifth time in a row, rather than say, oh, we can't do anything about it, just go out mm-hmm. there and do it a sixth time, which is disgusting yeah. and bad for everyone. You say, I'm sorry, we're not going to put you in prison because we're not jerks, but we're going to put mm-hmm. you here in forced treatment. Which is kind of like the obvious solution. Which like, is also kind of like prison, right? I it, mean, is, it is. But, so, yeah. so technically, they do deserve to go to prison for having broken yeah. the law, but that's right. really mean. Let's, just, let's send them to somewhere else instead yeah. and force treatment. Because you, you can't just let people keep yeah. pooping on the street. It's like having an adult right. in the room. Yeah. It's, like, it's like these are children in charge. You How, can't just let a person keep doing that. Can I, you know, I, uh, I, I, you know, we have many, uh, uh, reason is a house with many mansions. So we have lots of different uh, differences of opinion. Of course. And I'm, you know, within, within that, I'm, you know, I agree. I mean, I think if you're constantly defecating on the street, like you, there should be you're real breaking ramifications. The law and you're for hurting that. society. But how, um, in, in general, with a lot of policies like this, how do you make sure that you are not just creating another power structure that can be used arbitrarily by the state or by whoever is in power to punish people that, for whatever reason, you don't like? No, 100%. And yeah. I think 
this is like where a lot of our government is broken mm -hmm. today is you have to have separation of powers, you have to have checks mm -hmm. and balances, you have to have a separate legislative, judicial, and executive. It's one of the key things we get wrong with our administrative state today. And so, you know, but, but you do need a, you do need rules about mm -hmm. this you create, and you do need a court system that enforces those rules, and you do need a way to appeal to another thing outside of that court system if it's doing mm -hmm. something wrong, you know?